know why? Because intellectually, if anybody tries to intellectually compete with Satan, they'll be under his control. Anybody. Nobody can beat Satan but Jesus. Nobody. No one. No one. That's why you got to listen to the Holy Ghost. Every step I make, I got to listen to him because sometimes he'll take me the long way around. And I said, Lord, why are you going there? He said, just follow me because there is a trap set up for you right here. And you can't see it in the natural. Folks, we're in the combat zone. Not only are we going to get the wealth, we're going to strip it. Meaning that leave them with none of it, that the church going to have all of it. We're going to be in control of the financial system of this earth. Praise God, that came from the Holy Ghost. Ha, ha, ha. That came from the Holy Ghost. We are going to be in control of the financial system of the earth. We are going to be in control of the financial system of the earth. We are going to be in control of the money supply. We are going to be in control of the money supply. And the Vatican is facing some awkward were questions after an investigation was launched into its alleged involvement in a money laundering scheme. The financial scandal was triggered by a report in an Italian magazine that claimed the Vatican Bank laundered some $200 million. Katrina Grichel reports from Rome. The stuff of fiction is resonating in the Holy See as it deals with a case equally shrouded in mystery. The Vatican Bank has been accused of laundering $200 million through the accounts of Unicredit Bank one of the world's largest. An investigation into the case became public after the Italian magazine Panorama published details from tax police and prosecutors. This corruption is continuing on a regular basis at the Vatican Bank. Again, there's no reason for a religion to have a bank that does worldwide commercial activities dealing in gold dealing in insurance, dealing in property, and then hiding, of course, behind the Roman Catholic Church. The London Telegraph recently reported that the Vatican Bank is the eighth most popular destination for laundered money, ahead of the Bahamas, Switzerland and Liechtenstein. The reason? You can't trace any movement of cash within the bank. I had the privilege uh, to walk inside this bank and uh, it's uh, nothing like a bank. If you uh, go there, you uh, deposit or withdraw money without limit, without uh, any kind of receipt for the bank and for the client. All you, all you have is a single card with a number. But a lawyer... The Vatican Bank is facing a possible money laundering scandal after it emerged J.P. Morgan was closing one of its accounts due to a lack of information about the source of deposits, Italian newspapers report. The bank, officially known as the Institute of Works of Religion, IOR in Italian, reportedly failed to provide a Milan affiliate of J.P. Morgan with details about payments into the account in which 1.8 billion euros has been deposited in the past 18 months. Earlier this month, the bank was listed by the U.S. State Department as being potentially vulnerable to money laundering, Britain's Daily Telegraph reported. J.P. Morgan had been requesting information on the source of deposits since 2010, after the IOR was accused of breaking money laundering regulations by authorities in Rome, the Telegraph reported. According to Italian Financial Daily, J.P. Morgan Milan told the Vatican it would begin a phased closing of the account on March 16th. The paper added the account was a sweeping facility and was emptied every day with the funds transferred to an IOR account in Germany. This latest incident follows a series of scandals involving the bank's checkered financial past. This is Julia Telfer with IB Times TV. Three years from mid-2006, 
to mid-2009. HBUS conducted no monitoring of a banknotes account used by HB Mexico to physically deposit billions of U.S. dollars from clients, even though large cash transactions are inherently risky and Mexican drug cartels launder U.S. dollars from illegal drug sales. Talking about U.S. banking involvement in the Mexican drug wars, and as our story in Bloomberg Markets magazine tells it, and Sue uh, Keenan was mentioning, there was a plane, a DC-9, that was packed with drugs and money that was uh, busted by the authorities, and that uh, plane had been bought with laundered funds that they were transferred through Wachovia and Bank of America. We are rejoined now by Martin Woods, formerly at Wachovia. He served as director of Wachovia's anti uh, money laundering unit in London, and he left the bank after he was displeased with how executives uh, responded to his talking about what was going on. Uh, Martin, um, talk to us about some of the deferred prosecution agreements that have been happening in these types of cases. What exactly are they, and do they do anything to deter future activity like this? Well, similarly to UBS, um, Wachovia has entered into an agreement with the authorities to implement an enhanced anti-money laundering program, and in exchange for compliance with that, the prosecutors will not instigate now, the prosecutorial right, action. Firmly in the spotlight at the moment, following Barclays' problems in the LIBOR scandal, HSBC is now in trouble after a US investigation into risky practices at the bank. Joining me now is the Wall Street Journal's banking correspondent, David Enrich. David, tell us more about this investigation and, and what happened. Well, the U.S. Senate has been conducting a year-long investigation of HSBC for suspected money laundering, uh, or helping with money laundering, and what it found is a whole series of seemingly very bad activities by HSBC. Uh, in Mexico, for instance, they were ignoring all sorts of warning signs and helping Mexican drug dealers and drug gangs uh, traffic money in other parts of the world, Iran, the Middle East. Uh, there was activity that was spotted with uh, people connected to terrorist organizations. Really bad. Actually, part of what's particularly worrisome, not for the British audience, but for an American audience, is that the U.S. regulator, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, was also aware of this and really did nothing about it. So deceiving him. Why? Because sometimes you can set up an ungodly situation. You can set up a situation where the folk that you go into league with end up taking you to court. Now, now this, you, you have to read this and I don't have time to go into it, but just listen to this because you're coming into a lot of money. You're coming into a lot of money. And Satan is coming after it. Because you're coming into a lot of money. You're coming into a lot of money. And Satan is coming after it. Work of what? Gathering and heaping up that he may give to one who pleases God this also is vanity and vexation spirit. No, he, he's got a job out there. Sinner's got a job. What's his job? To gather it up. What's your job? To receive that, that transfer. What does he do? He lives to the Lord. And that which he has given him, give, will he what? Pay him again. Who's going to pay him? The Lord. Who is the Lord going to pay? Me. Now, where am I going to get it from to give to them? No, no. Uh, uh, no don't mess with me now. Where am I? He. Who is the of gathering? Who is he going to give it to? Why is he going to give it to me? I'm good before God. An insatiable appetite they have for money. 
But that's because this is their ministry. Night and day, gathering it up for a people who will be used to bless the nations of the earth. Isn't that wonderful? So the wealth will come from the sinners of this world. And you and I have been chosen for this hour. So you are going to be a distributor in these last days. You're going to be a spender. You're going to be a spender. I think it is a puzzle that Americans haven't been saving much. Uh, we have traditionally been known as a relatively low saving country compared to say countries like Japan. But the dramatic thing is that from the early 1980s to the, uh, just before the financial crisis, the savings rate went from basically 10% of our GDP down to 1% of our GDP. Uh, it was also a surprise because in all the decades before the 1980s, going back to World War II, savings had been constant in the United States. In fact, there were various theories and laws that the savings rate was a constant. Uh, why did it go down so much? I think mainly because of the stock market boom and the rise in home prices. So Americans saw the value of their wealth go way up and therefore they felt Let's spend a little bit of it. You're going to be a spender. And an increase in consumption drove down the savings component. Second, we worried, though, in the process of doing that, a low savings country borrowing everything abroad to finance its consumption would have to worry that foreigners would begin to question our ability to repay. And we would begin to see growing difficulties of that process. There was never much evidence prior to the financial crisis that that would occur. And in fact, uh, foreigners rushed into the United States because of what they thought was our safe financial markets during the financial crisis. The one area where I do think it's very important is mainly in terms of American household savings to finance their retirement and the buildup of wealth prior That's to That's now a problem because the crash of the housing market, the crash of the stock market is bringing forward the fact that this wealth suddenly vanished on us. And we do now have a retirement problem for many Americans. For Abraham, for you to get what God has for you, especially if you're going to become a billionaire. Especially if you're going to become a billionaire.